I want to give you an update on what happened the first week of the legislative session happening now in 2021 and the important leadership changes that occurred as well. So um, this is the first session of the 55th state New Mexico legislature and um, it's important to distinguish that because there's two sessions within the legislature. There's the first year which is a 60-day session and then there's the second year which is 30 days and that's meant just to touch on the budget. So this is the first one of the 55th state legislature. And um, there was a lot of changes that happened because last year in 2020, we had all 112 state legislators on the ballot. Some of the races were contested, some were not. And um, those, the ones that were contested, some were even contested by members of their own party. So if somebody was more of a moderate figure, their party put into place somebody that was a little bit more left-leaning um, or right-leaning, it just depended on the race. And from that, we had a total of 23 new members, which is important to note because that's 21% of our overall legislative body that are freshmen coming right into the door with um, not a lot of experience in the roundhouse. And it's really different this year because most of it is happening online. There is some hybrid models that are happening where some members can be in their um, in the committee chamber or perhaps on the floor. That's what we saw on the first day. But by and large, everything's gonna be online. Um, of course, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And that has been a big point of contention because some folks feel like they need to be there in person, they need to be representing their constituents. <clears throat> Others think it's completely appropriate to conduct this business online, and they anticipate seeing more of the public engage with the process that way. So um, a lot of discussion there. Let's talk about the leadership. So on the House side, it remained largely the same. Um, Re-elected into the speaker position is Representative Brian Egoff of Santa Fe. And this role is the most powerful role in the chamber because it's this person's responsibility to appoint members to the 17 standing House committees. And this person also gets to say who the chair and vice chair are. That's important because they get to say what gets to be put on their agenda and um, how what how much time each thing gets and if they fast track it. So the speaker's position yields a lot of power. And again, that's Representative Brian Egoff. On the um, majority side, that's the Democrats. Um, we have Representative Cheryl Williams Stapleton remains the majority floor leader and her whip is Representative Doreen Gallegos. On the House or on the Republican side of that equation, we have Representative Jim Townsend remaining the minority floor leader with Representative Rod Montoya as his whip. In this chamber, the Democrats hold a 45 to 25 advantage. So they have 45 Democrats and just 25 Republicans. On the Senate side, we had a big change up. We had a few um, of the more moderate Democrats ousted last election cycle, which left a lot of key positions open. The first of which is the Senate President Pro Tem. Previously, it was held by Senator Mary Kay Papin from um, the southern part of the state. The recently elected now is Senator Mimi Stewart. And the Senate is, um, they organize their business a little bit differently where this person, the Senate pro tem or president pro tem, um, will be on this committee called the committee's committee along with their leadership in that chamber to figure out which committees they're going to have, who's going to be the chair, vice chair, et cetera, et cetera. Um, on the, um, on the, the leadership side for the Democrats, we have Senator Peter Worth returning along with, um, but he has a new whip because Senator Mimi Stewart used to be that in that position, but she was elected to a new one. Now we have Senator Linda M. Lopez. 
So there's a new person there. And then on the Republican side of the Senate, we have two new members um, in the leadership positions. We have Senator Gregory Baca as the minority floor leader and Senator Craig Brandt as the minority whip. Um, lots of changes happening. Another one that I've had my eye on as well as all of New Mexico is Senator John Arthur Smith's seat. Um, he was replaced by another Democrat, but that left a vacancy as the um, Senate, led, uh, Senate Finance Committee chair. And um, that was just named to be Senator George Munoz to that seat. So um, lots of activity with shuffling around on leadership. Um, it's going to provide for an interesting session, not only having the new leadership and the 23 new freshmen, but also having everything online, having lobbyists and legislators trying to commute or communicate via that medium and um, see how that works out and see how the constituents can engage with the process. We're told we're going to have um, different testimony or that to be allowed in committee meetings, but we haven't exactly seen how that's worked out. Um, in the first special session of 2020, uh, there was that opportunity to speak up, but that was um, ripe with some technical challenges and some kind of hackers got into the mix too. So we definitely don't want to see that again. But here at Beyonce, we're going to share with you all the information as we are watching this happening, letting you know how you can engage and the best way to communicate with your elected officials who represent you. But one thing's for sure, despite all these changes, despite the fact that the medium is completely changed, uh, the fact remains that we are going to need to get together and work together to find a way forward for our state and Beyonce's here to help you do that. So thanks for watching. and. I will give another update, the video update, probably in a couple weeks or so, but um, you never know. I might have to jump back on. We'll see. But thanks for watching. Catch you next time.